Welcome to Modern Motoring. Today we're with the 2025 Honda Civic Hybrid. It's the sedan version. Yes, they just released the hatchback version. Very similar specs, but we'll focus on the sedan for this video. So we'll do a perks, quirks, and irks, but let's start with some baseline numbers. So the hybrid runs off a two liter four cylinder engine, gets two electric motors, total output is 200 horsepower, total pound feet of torque is 232 through an ECVT, front wheel drive only. Since we're on the numbers train, let's talk about fuel consumption because that is a big separator here between the hybrid and the gas. So in liters per 100 kilometers, it is 4.7 on city streets, 5.1 on the highway and 4.9 combined. And here's the interesting thing. The hybrid runs off a 40.36 liter fuel tank and the gasoline model runs off a 46.9 liter fuel tank. So you get much better fuel figures here with a smaller tank. And quick math tells me you can go a little over 800 kilometers on a full tank of fuel, 87 octane fuel for that matter. Let's jump into the perks. And the first one is fuel economy. And I know I just mentioned it, but it is the biggest one here as far as what the Civic Hybrid has going for it. Standard safety is another one. And there's a long list. Adaptive cruise control, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, lane keep assist system, automatic emergency braking, a traffic jam assist, traffic sign recognition, automatic high beams, blind spot monitoring, and the driver attention monitor. So well done on that side, Honda. Your headlights, daytime runners, and turn signals are all LED. So pretty premium move there, Honda. And we'll touch more on the premium side of things once we get into a few more of the perks. Uh, standard sunroof for all hybrids, standard remote start, standard heated steering wheel, standard heated front seats. Um, pretty good value here for, uh, for a Civic. Yes, there's a fair amount of piano black, but it is not anywhere where you put your hands. It is completely for looking and it is not interfering with anything functional at all. And there's a nice long strip uh, that bookmarks that honeycomb little piece in the dash insert and there's a little bit on the doors. You get a traditional gear lever. And I know a lot of other manufacturers are going towards different styles of ways to change your gears, but thank you, Honda, for keeping things traditional. Uh, more on the traditional side, you have all physical buttons for all of your HVAC controls. It's a few buttons, it's three dials, and thank you for not making me screw around to go through the screen to change the direction of the air or do anything HVAC related. It's a nice blend of modern and traditional. Staying on the interior, there is a very upscale and premium feel here, just like Mazda has. And Mazda is in their own little lane as far as not being quite mainstream and certainly not being luxury. And I find the Civic through this entire generation has that. It's a nice clean look. It's got nice high quality materials. You have your nice soft touch points. The steering wheel feels really good to hang on to. Seats are very comfortable. The care and design and thoughtfulness of the interior sets it apart from Toyota for me. And I see the Corolla hybrid being the biggest competitor here. The driving fuel is a big perk here with the 200 horsepower and 232 pound feet of torque. There is a lot of get up and go. It is quick, it is agile, it is nimble. It's so easy to park, it's easy to drive. And yes, it's an ECVT, so you don't get that real traditional feeling, but the engineering at Honda with the Civic Hybrid has done a pretty good job in tweaking it so you get a little bit of a feel for traditional driving knowing it's still an ECVT and and the droning sounds of the ECVT are minimal. I'll uh, give you a quick listen now. Not too bad. I'm very impressed in how they've put this together. I don't see a lot of people interested in having a lot of power here and I don't think power is going to be a big factor for those looking in the uh, hybrid sedan market. But Honda's thrown quite a bit here. Honda's really knocked it out of the park as far as balance goes. Again, 4.9 liters per 100 kilometers combined and power figures, you know, I, it's the twos for 200, uh, but that torque coming in at 232 pound feet, very, very impressive. Let's go on to the quirks and on the exterior, it looks a lot like the gasoline version of the Civic. There's a small difference up front with the design. It's a little bit lower here on the hybrid, but I'm happy that Honda didn't make it wildly different. I think it's a cost saving measure. You know, instead of redesigning a Civic Hybrid, they just did a couple of tweaks on the outside. And yes, there's a hybrid badging on the rear, but from an 
overall exterior look pretty much identical. It's the same cargo figures as the gasoline model at 419 liters. So it could be a perk, but I gotta put something in the quirk pile. Last quirk are the air vents and that little joystick you use to change the direction of the air. And I think it's kind of different. It's kind of cute, kind of cool. Uh, usually it's a, a thin slat that you move left to right, up and down, or it's circular. Last quirk is on the paddle shifters and there are four different levels as far as they've got a regen. It is definitely not a one pedal driving situation and you barely feel it. You know, I'm gonna go on to four and take my foot off the accelerator. It slows a little bit and you can notice it, but don't use it to try and bring the vehicle to a complete stop. Another quirk are the high beams because usually it's the low beams and you pull the lever back and it's a double filament, so it turns into the high beams. But what Honda's done here is put a bulb in between the two low beams which act as your high beams. On to the ERCs. First up, there is no driver lumbar support adjustments available on any of the Civic hybrids. Thankfully, the seats are comfortable, but I would have liked to have seen that, especially at this price point. There's no spare tire on the hybrid. There is only a tire fill kit, whereas the gasoline models do get a uh, small little spare tire. Uh, there's no height adjustment on the passenger seat. That's a bit of a miss. Even a manual height adjuster would have done it. Now on this top trim here, you do have a four-way power seat. So the seat bottom goes forwards and backwards and the seat back goes forwards and backwards. On the top trim sport touring hybrid, you do get a nine inch infotainment system. But on the other three, the other one hybrid being the sport hybrid and the two gasoline models, that's a seven inch screen. Just give everybody the same nine inch screen. Why? Well, another reason that taps into that is wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto only come with the nine inch screen. It still has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto for the other three trims, but you gotta plug in for it. And I like plugging in for it. I like that hardwired connection, but I know a lot of people have a preference to have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. They just wanna get in the car started up and uh, have that system all set up for them. The backup camera is pretty awful, like astonishingly awful for something that has 2025 as a model year for it. It looks so outdated and it's grainy and it's low res. And the last irk is gonna be price because it's a little high and that's a good segue to go into pricing and the competition. So I'll stop the car because there are so many numbers and my memory is good, which is not quite as good as all of these numbers are. Let's start with pricing for the sedan. So the Sport Hybrid is 35,262, and the Sport Touring Hybrid, which is what we have here, is 38,762. So $2,500 of a difference. Interestingly, the top trim gas Sport for the Civic is 33,366. So only a couple thousand dollars away from the base model hybrid. So if fuel consumption is a determining factor for you, maybe think about giving up the gas on the sport trim, which is the top trim, and going for a base model uh, sport hybrid for the hybrid. Obviously hybrid, I'm just reading the way I have the notes set up. Uh, interestingly, the hatchback is $1,900 more and it runs off the same two trim. So there's a hatchback sport hybrid and there's a hatchback sport touring hybrid. So let's go competition, the Corolla. Four different trims, two in front wheel drive, two in all wheel drive. Base to base, it's 29885 for the LE Corolla Hybrid. Contrast that with the Sport Hybrid here with the Civic uh, for 35262. That's about $5,000 of a difference. Uh, we go to the top of the Corolla Hybrid lineup. That's the XSE all-wheel drive, 39980, which is really close to the top trim here. It's about $1,000 of a difference with the Corolla being a thousand dollars more, but you're getting all wheel drive and you're getting a few extra bits and pieces with the Corolla. Fuel consumption is the same between all Corolla hybrids at 4.9 as it is for the Civic sedan hybrids at 4.9. Next up is the Camry. And if you're thinking those aren't the same class of vehicle at all, I know that. However, the pricing is really, really close to get into a base Camry hybrid, the SE, uh, for the front wheel drive version, it's 37,295. To get into a SE all wheel drive is 40,945. So again, about a thousand dollars difference between a Camry SE all wheel drive, which is the lowest 
of the trims out of all of them, but it's how you get into the all-wheel drive world. Um, and the Civic hybrid pricing for the sedan is so high, well, even for the hatchback for that matter. Last touch on the Camry, the front wheel drive is 4.9 liters per hundred kilometers, same as what we have here. And the all wheel drive takes it up a little bit to the 5.1 liters per hundred kilometers. Next up is the Prius XLE all wheel drive, 40,645. And again, that's so close to what we have here, um, being again, the 38,762. So little, almost $2,000 of a difference but the Prius has won so many awards and it's like the hottest thing Toyota has and there's a mile long waiting list for it. So that might be a reason you lean closer towards the Civic Hybrid versus the Prius, it's just availability. Last up is the Elantra Hybrid and that's one trim only front wheel drive, $30,809. Uh, that's $8,000 less than what we have here and it's decked out pretty well and Hyundai's done a peculiar, job as far as making it only one where I would have figured with them being so deep into electrification they might get rid of a couple of the gasoline trims or at least make it hybrid only might be a 26 27 thing as far as model years go but 4.7 liters per 100 kilometers it's the lowest price and it's got the lowest consumption so I know it's not as popular as the Civic or the Corolla but it's definitely something worth looking at Last up is the Accord, and just like the Camry, it's not the same class, but the pricing is similar, which is completely confusing for me as far as why Honda is doing it like that. You can get into a base model hybrid Accord for 40,266, or you can get the top two of two trims here, again, for the 38,762, so a couple thousand dollars difference, actually less than that, about $1,500. I, I don't understand Honda's logic behind that. Now you wanna go all the way to the top for the Accord, uh, 47,462. Um, also interesting while I'm on the numbers train, uh, the 4266 for the base Accord Hybrid is pretty much the same price as the top trim Civic Hatchback. So there's a lot of competition in the sedan hybrid market. Uh, I'm happy to see it because sedans usually don't do all that well compared to crossovers, CUVs, SUVs, um, basically anything without a back wiper. So I'm happy to see there's uh, more than you know a couple of options here for those of us that are interested in having something lower to the ground and having um, alternate propulsion. That's going to wrap it up for the 2025 Honda Civic Sedan Hybrid. If you have any questions on what you've seen, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get you answers as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate the support. And I invite you to join our social media community. We're on all the major platforms. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. Without you, there is no modern motoring. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All in one take. Pretty good.